You do not know how many billions of souls and billions of dollars are attached to your little assignment. You're saying, Pastor Ben, it's so small. I don't want to serve. I don't want to take out the trash. I don't want to clean no toilet. Listen, this little assignment, if you're faithful with the little, it will open up the next assignment. It will open up the next door, which means that this assignment, if you're faithful with the little, it will accumulate. It will overflow. It will come onto you. It will open up the next assignment. You don't know what the little is about to do. Today, I want to talk about new kingdom assignments because a lot of us do not understand when the seasons have changed. And I've said this many times, you and I, we're not seasonal beings, we are eternal beings. Someone say eternal, okay? We're not seasonal beings, we're eternal beings, which means that we need to live in, from, in and from the realm of eternity rather than living in seasons. And unfortunately, so many of us, we're so seasonal that we're not committed to anything. We're so seasonal that uh, we're not able to be consistent. We're so seasonal that uh, we don't know who we are. We don't know where we're from. We don't know what we look like. The Bible says in the book of James that it's like a man that looks uh, uh, at himself in the mirror and he keeps looking at himself. And that's what double-mindedness double mindedness means. Someone say double-mindedness. And I believe that God is breaking off double-mindedness off of America. What does it mean to be double-minded? You keep looking at yourself in the mirror, but you're forgetful. Okay, it's, you cannot remember, okay? There's, there's like a, a, a deaf and dumb spirit that's causing you uh, to not have quick memory. It's causing you to be uh, disconnected and deactivated. And I believe that God wants us to be activated in the and God wants to activate you. God wants you to come alive in the river. God wants you to come alive. Come on, Shabbat Scott. Every part of you is coming alive. It's not meant to be dead. It's not meant to be fallen or broken apart. Come on. You're not a victim. You're not a wounded being. Come on. You're made whole by the power, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But I believe that there are new kingdom assignments that God has given to his people. And unfortunately, way too many of us were stuck on being seasonal. Rather than being eternal, we're stuck on being seasonal rather than being eternal. And, uh, you know, but it's important for us to understand the times and the seasons. Are you with me? Someone saying that. Uh, it's important for us to understand what God's doing in each and every season. Remember, if you want to be effective, you need to be led by the Spirit of God. But unfortunately, too many people are not led by the Spirit of God. We're not led by the Holy Spirit. We're led by our flesh. We're led by our emotions. And you can say, well, Pastor Ben, you know, God's emotional. God's the most emotional being on, on earth in the universe, of course. But he's not over emphatically emotional where he's only moved by his emotions. No, God is not uh, manipulated and pulled by his emotions, okay? Even though God is all heart and he's all love. He's all encompassing love. However, God is also a God of reason. He's a God of wisdom, okay? Come on now, people of God. And, you know, uh, so thing is, every single, uh, so many people are being moved by flesh and by emotions and by good ideas. Listen, good ideas will not cut it. We need God ideas. We need to be moved by the Spirit. And hear me now, you prophetic people, you pathetic people, uh, hear me now, right now. Right now, there is a revelation of fruit. Come on. Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. And right now, we're in a time where we, we are going to see the fruit of all that's being done and all that's taken place in the last season, which means it's reaping season. It's time to reap. Come on, we just celebrated Shavuot, Pentecost. We're still in Shavuot, Sivan month, the month of Shavuot, which means it's the month of harvest. It's the month of reaping. It's the time and season of reaping. And we're going to see a lot of false bad fruit that's going to be reaped. And, and don't be surprised when all you see is you have reaped flesh, when all you see is you have reaped this little, when all you see is you have reaped this. Come on, people, God wants you and I 
to reap bounty, to reap plenty, to reap in the spirit, to reap an inheritance, a godly heritage in the kingdom of God. God wants you and I to have a bounty, plentiful, abounding inheritance in the kingdom of God, not just when we die and go to heaven, but because we have already died. We're in the heavenly places right now, and so we receive it now. We need to understand every season, they're sowing and reaping every season. So what season are you in right now? Are you with me today? Jacarata, what season are you in right now? <clears throat> and uh, I believe right now, God is releasing new kingdom assignments. Come on, are you with me today? New kingdom assignments. Somebody repeat this with me. Someone say, I am receiving my new kingdom assignment. Do, 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 do. Come on, you are receiving your new kingdom assignment. Are you with me today? If you're with me today, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to revelate and teach a little bit, and I'm going to go to some scripture here, okay? A lot of times, you, like I said earlier, we're eternal beings, not seasonal beings. Here's the thing. You can be called to uh, to people. You can be called to places. You, you can be called to an assignment. It's important for you and I to understand uh our assignment and assignments can change in every single season. Uh, I remember uh, there was a season where God gave me an assignment to pray for certain people. God gave me an assignment to, uh, excuse me, to serve different people. God gave me an assignment to go after certain people. But you know when that season's changed. You know when that guardianship has changed. When the, uh, the changing of the guard has taken place. Listen, there's a changing of the guard. There's a guardianship. Guardians of the galaxy. There's a guardianship that's changing. A uh, changing of the guard and that's shifting and taking place. And you and I need to know how to move in and out of realms. You and I need to know how to move in and out of the four faces of God. You and I need to know how to be an apostle, how to be an evangelist, how to be a prophet, how to be a pastor, how to be a, a, a teacher. You and I need to know how to be a father. How to be a son, how to be a brother, how to be a teacher, how to be a healer. Listen, we can move in and out of realms, but unfortunately, people don't know how to shift and how to change their shape too quickly. Listen, are you with me right now? You are called to be a shape shifter. You know, there's such a thing as shape shifters. Werewolves are real. Do you know that there are real things called werewolves? Do you know that even the martial arts and Kung Fu and, and Karate, do you know that these are dark martial arts? These are dark spirits. These people, the reason why they do Crouching Tiger or Hidden Dragon is because these spirit animals would come in and upon them at certain times of the day whenever they do certain types of practices and meditations. And when they do that, they begin to shape, uh, they begin to shift in their shape. People can actually manifest animals. People can actually manifest demons. People can actually look like demons. Listen, studies and scientists say that the longer you're married with somebody, the more you look like your spouse. Did you know that? Come on, people of God. So you and I were shapeshifters, which means that we begin to move. We begin to ebb and flow. Everything about us begins to change because we're going from glory to glory. We're going from revelation to revelation. Rabo. And that's why some of you right now, you're getting you're getting a, a new a kingdom assignment of justice. Who am I talking to? You're getting a new kingdom assignment of justice. That's why some of you are getting a new kingdom assignment of prophecy. That's why some of you are getting a new kingdom assignment of preaching the gospel. Listen, in every single season, some of you, We'll feel the shifting. There's a time where you're like, well, Pastor Ben, you know, I feel like God's leading me to prophesy. That's the spirit of the Lord that's leading you. That's the spirit of God that is moving you to do that. Are you following me? There's times where there's a creative anointing that's sitting, resting on my life. And I'm like, man, 
All I got to do is write. I feel like, you know, I got to write. I feel like I got to blog. I feel like, you know, and then there's other times where, you know, I can feel the preaching mantle and the teaching mantle and I just want to teach and I just want to preach and it flows out of me like a river. It flows uh, it just with no hindrances, with no limitation. It just preach, 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 teach, teach, teach. There's times where I can feel the revivalist anointing, the breaker anointing. There's a hunger. There's an expectation. There's a power that is present. There's a breakthrough that is easy. It's just easy. It's happening. Bang, bang, bang. There's times where the prophetic word of knowledge, unction is strong. And I could read people's mails like, like no tomorrow. And, you know, but there's different seasons at different times. And you and I need to understand the new kingdom assignment that God's given us. Because some of you, the grace has lifted off of the old assignment. And that doesn't mean that you're, you're not being committed and, and you're, you're moving in dishonor in old relations. Here's the thing. I, I want to talk about this real quick, okay? Because many people, okay, you can change your assignment, but that doesn't mean that you change in dishonor. Come on, someone say, preach, pastor, back. Listen, too many people... Uh, bless his prophet is Haley. Too many people change assignments out of dishonor. I'm telling you, I'm about to preach right now. Too many people change roles, change clothes, change identities in dishonor. Too many people move in dishonor. So therefore, they have to continue in dishonor. Listen, if you exit wrong, you will enter wrong. If you sow in the flesh, you will reap the flesh. If you open the door by your works, then you will have to stay in the room by your performance. And too many people change assignments through dishonor. What does that mean? That means that you know that a, the grace is lifted from an assignment. But, come on people, but... You leave the relationship, you leave the ministry, you leave the job corporation in a dishonorable way, in a way that is destructive, in a way that there's division, in a way where there's a breaching of the barrier, a breach in the spirit. What does a breach in the spirit mean? That means that the wall, there's a breach. That means there's a hole, there's a gap. There's something that's fallen. There's an open space, an open door in the spirit, in the wall of unity. And too many people leave a season, leave an assignment in dishonor rather than honor. But I want to tell you now that God is about to fill the gap. God is about to fill the void. God is about to fill the empty places. God is about to fill the breach. Come on, Rabbi. God, my God, my Holy Spirit is the filler. He is the infiller. He is the indweller. He is the overcomer. He is the overflower. My God is the high priest. He is the intercessor. He is the one that stands in the gap. He is the one that intercedes and fills the gaps in all the places and all the wrong places. He is the one that is in the center of it all. He holds it together by the arms that were outstretched on the cross. Come on, he is the intersection. He is the intercessor. He is completely releasing intercession for you and I right now. Only he can do it. So, most people leave an assignment out of dishonor. Most people leave, and listen, uh, dishonor and honor looks different for every person in every camp. Okay, that's why you need to ask the Holy Spirit. Listen, you need to ask the Holy Ghost. Are you guys with me today? If you're with me right now, give me some hearts and likes. Shakara. Listen, this word assignment uh, in the definition means a task or piece of work assigned to somebody as a part of their job. An attribution of somebody or something as belonging. Assignment. Someone say assignment. Let me ask you this. Do you know your assignment? Do you know your kingdom assignment right now? Remember, kingdom. It's a kingdom of many domains, many realms, many, many facets. Do you know your kingdom assignment today? I'm telling you that there are new kingdom assignments that are being released right now. Assignments and alignments. All right. 
Now I'm rhyming. Someone say assignments and alignment. Listen, you will find your kingdom assignments in your alignment. Okay. You will find your kingdom assignments in your alignments. What does that mean? In those connections, relationships. Listen, kingdom assignments always have to do with this. Are you ready to take some notes? Kingdom assignments always have to do with people, always have to do with places, and it always has to do with your gifting. Okay? Kingdom assignments always have to do with people. Number two, it has to do with places or regions. And number three, it has to do with giftings. Come on, someone say hallelujah. Kingdom assignments. And there are new kingdom assignments that God's giving, which means that there's new people, there's new connections, there's new relationships. Someone say amen. But remember, move in honor with the old, with, with the old, with the old friends, the new partners, the new assignments, the new roles, the new teams, the, the new partnerships. Move in honor with the old. Number two, places, places. You know, uh, about about two months ago, I released this word about God is, is relocating you. And that word just seems to be so true. And, you know, I just moved to a new home here, our church. Uh, we're moving to a new location, Lord willing, in the Costa Mesa area. And I have seen so many people on Facebook, social media, uh, commenting, responding, posting photos of their new homes, of their new offices, of their new church building. God is relocating you. Okay, you know that uh, that you you have a new kingdom assignment whenever you move to a new region or whenever you go to a new place, and that's one of the reasons why I love traveling. I love traveling because there's there's assignments in each realm and each region. And hear me now, there's only certain people that are able to unlock certain things in different regions. I'm gonna repeat that again. There are only certain people. That can unlock certain blessings in certain regions. So if God gave you the assignment, you better obey. Because if you don't obey, then that assignment or that door or that unlocking will not happen. There's only certain people, shakaraka, that, that have certain assignments. That's why you need to obey. You need to count the cost. You need to stop whining and, and stop, you know, uh, stop complaining. And you need to obey the assignment on your life because you don't know how many millions are attached to your assignment. Huh? You do not know how many billions of souls and billions of dollars are attached to your little assignment. You're saying, Pastor Ben, it's so small. I don't want to serve. I don't want to take out the trash. I don't want to clean no toilet. Listen, this little assignment, if you're faithful with the little, it will open up the next assignment. It will open up the next door, which means that this assignment, if you're faithful with the little, it will accumulate. It will overflow. It will come onto you. It will open up the next assignment. You don't know what the little is about to do in the future. This little assignment called praying for five minutes a day. Day, this little assignment that you feel when God wakes you up in the middle of the night, although you want to sleep and you want to get your beauty sleep, you'll got this little assignment, it's attached to millions and billions, and you don't even know. You don't know why God woke you up to watch this Facebook. I don't know why God's telling me to preach this message, but who knows, this Facebook, this broadcast might be attached to millions. It may not get millions of views or likes right now, but who knows? It could impact one person, and that one person can impact millions. Come on now. Your kingdom assignment, no matter how small, how little, how big, how grandiose, it's attached to millions. I remember, I remember years ago when I had a lot of time. I was a younger man, and uh, I was driving Uber. I was driving Uber at the time, just making a little bit of extra money. I was evangelizing to the people I was driving. And uh, at that time, uh, you know, I was complaining to God. I said, Jesus, you know, I, I'm serving you wholeheartedly. I'm serving you faithfully. I need some cheddar. I need some dinero. I need some feria. I need some money, God. Uh, you know, and I said, God, I, I need some money. And I was driving Uber. And at that time, the Lord spoke to me. And said, write your book. 
I said, no, I don't want to write the book. I said, I'm, I'm lazy. I'm making up excuses like Moses said, you know, what's your excuse? And, you know, I started making up excuses. And he began speaking to me saying, if you're not going to write your book, then stop complaining that you had no money. And then I realized a revelation came to me that one book can open up doors. And from there, I, I, I wrote the book. I published the book. How many doors did it open from there? How many, how many people did it bless there? I did a conference. I did a book tour in Canada. I did a book tour in Asia. Uh, got on magazines, got on shows. And from there, it opened up different doors. And it became a, a realm of credibility. It wasn't just about the book sales that I sold across the world. But it was about that next step. It was about that next level. It was about that next assignment that opened up the door to the next. Who would have known that there would be this media anointing or this media grace on my life if I didn't start with that little step? Are you following me here today? There are new kingdom assignments. Okay, I'm preaching here. Remember, you will know and understand when a certain grace lifts. All right, and I don't know I was going to teach on all this right now, but how do you know that a grace has lifted? Okay, listen, just because a grace is lifted doesn't mean that you're meant to lift from that assignment. Okay, it just means that there a new grace is about to come over you or a new infilling, a new passion, a new empowerment, a new enablement of the Lord will come upon you for that assignment. Okay, but how do you know a grace is lifted when you're not enjoying it anymore? How do you know the grace is lifted? If you're not feeling the presence of God anymore, you're not feeling the pleasure of Jesus. How do you know when grace has lifted? When you, you see the fruit and the evidence of, of what you, you've been plowing into and faithful for. You, you, see, you see the ROI, you see the return, you see the fruit, you see the evidence. So no longer, listen, the reason why there's pastors is because it's hurting people. But once people are whole, we don't need pastors anymore. The reason why we need police officers is because there's crime and there's criminals and there's predators and there's crazy people out there. But once we're in a perfect utopia world with saints filled with the Holy Ghost, then we don't need any police. Are you following me? So right now we're living in a world where too many people are throwing out the baby out with the bathwater. But God wants us to understand when the grace is lifted. When the grace is lifted. Okay, listen, this doesn't mean that we're not being committed people. Man, that's one of the disgraceful uh, sneers of the charismatic uh, community, especially here on the West Coast, the blessed coast, is that we have way too many church hoppers, way too many conference goers, way too many uh, charismaniacs. That just move and fluff and buff and manifest and shake and get nothing done in life. That's one of the unfortunate mishandlings and misstewardings of the prophetic and of the charismatic movement. Don't just be a shaker in the spirit. All right. Be practical and be committed and have character and have consistency. All right. Anyways, new kingdom assignments. This is so good. Acts 19.3. Somebody write that down. Acts 19.3. So Paul asked, what baptism did you receive? And they replied, John's baptism. Paul explained John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him that is in Jesus. I love this here. Okay. Uh, the disciples of John the Baptist, all right, from one camp. The disciples of one denomination. One move of God, one generation. Remember John the Baptist? His ministry prepared the way for Jesus' ministry. So John the Baptist was around before Jesus, okay? So the disciples of John the Baptist comes and meets and encounters Paul, the apostle, who is an apostle and a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so John the Baptist's disciples, a disciple of another movement, comes and encounters Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul says, in what name have you been baptized in? And they said, we've only been baptized in the name of John the Baptist. 
and apostle Paul says you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ of the Holy Spirit and fire are you are you following me? someone say fire so to me this is a changing of kingdom assignment one day they were baptized in John the Baptist the next day they were baptized in Jesus Christ one day they were immersed immersion they were fully one in the teachings and in the ways in the doctrines in the movements of John the Baptist however right when they came into a collision a face-to-face -face encounter with the Apostle Paul bam they they shifted over they transferred into the baptism the immersion the teachings the ways the following the goodness they they were fully immersed in the fire of the Holy Ghost you were about to change assignments. One day you were in the assignment of John the Baptist. The next day you're going to be on the assignment of Jesus Christ. One day you were in the assignment of this movement. But now, and that's why right now we are seeing many people come into this ministry and come into the new glory and the new realm because there's a shift they were in a ministry of john the baptist but now they're coming into a new ministry someone say amen are you able to realize the higher revelation are you able to realize the higher grace the greater favor are you able to realize when you come face to face with an opportune time a kairos moment when and an opportunity is laid out before you are you able to realize when the Lord sets something before your table the opportunity of a lifetime must be grabbed must be received must be taken while there's still a lifetime in the opportunity are you able to realize when you've hit a gold mine when you've hit a jackpot when something's been brought before you and you know it is unusual you know that it is different you know that it is something unprecedented you know that this is not like anything else you know that this is not like anybody else you know you you've done your your comparison you've done your judgment you you've put things on a scale and, and you've weighed things the pros and the cons and you've realized there's something different about this there's a new kingdom assignment coming for you there are new alignments coming over you there are, there's a new grace coming over you. There's a new power and a new shift that's coming over you. There's a new grace that's coming over you. Come on, people of God. He's moving you to a new realm. He's moving you to a new physical location. He's moving you to new giftings. Come on. He's moving you to new empowerments, new enactment, enactments and enablements of Christ Jesus. Come on. You're coming to a head-to-head -head collision. You're coming to a face-to-face -face collision. Ha -ha. John the Baptist and people are coming to you. People are coming to your ministry. People are coming. Hallelujah. Jabbat. People are coming to your company. People are coming to your business. Someone say amen. Listen, the Bible says to each person, grace has been assigned. God is assigning to you a new grace. He's assigning to you a new weapon. God is assigning to you a new mantle. I hear the Lord saying, you have worn the old mantle well, but now I am assigning to you a new mantle, says the Lord. You wore the old definition, the old role, the old title well. But now, today, I am assigning to you a new mantle. I am putting over your shoulders a new wardrobe. I am putting over your life a new crown. I am putting over you a new prayer language. I am putting over Araka. Arabo, the Bible says that have you, do you see a man that is gifted? He will not be before regular people, but the gift will make room for him to come before kings and governors. Kings and priests. Karahande. Listen, I'm telling you right now. Jesus, my God, my King, my Holy Spirit is making way for you. There's a new grace, a new assignment. Come on, He's entrusting you. He is enacting you with something fresh, with something new in this season. Do not be afraid to let go. Do not be afraid to say bye, bye, bye. Do not be afraid to move on, people like God. I know it can be scary. 
I know it can be a little anxious, but do not be anxious. Be grateful. Praise God. Praise Him. Praise Jesus. Jacarataresco. I know it, it can be a little uh, weary moving into the land and the realm of the unknown, but my God is releasing a new assignment over you. New kingdom assignment. So into amen. I'm telling you, not only has the grace lifted, but God is lifting you from glory to glory. And the Bible says that there are angels on assignment. Someone to amen. There are angels on assignment. That word assignment means angels out to serve. Ooh, my gosh. Angels out to serve. There are angels on assignment. There are angels out to serve. Do you know that angels are attached to assignment? Angels are also on a roll. They're on a move. They're on the move. There are angels out to serve. There are angels that are assigned certain things. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My gosh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Psalm 91, verse 11 to 12. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Hallelujah. There are angels that God has assigned over your life to serve, to promote, to bless, to help out, to enact. Give yourself grace to move into this new kingdom assignment. Someone say amen. Father, I pray for our friends and family right now watching. I pray that the grace, the enacting, the hand of God would come over you. I hear the Lord said, I'm moving you to be more effective. To be more effectual, to be more fruitful, I am moving you. To be more bountiful, to be more powerful, I am moving you to be more visible. I am moving you to be more respected, to be more honorable. I hear the Lord say, I'm moving you to, uh, to be more effective. Remember, the Bible says in the book of James that the prayers of the righteous availeth much, or the prayers of the righteous are effective. You can pray and not be effective. You can obey and not be effective. You can do many works and be busy and not be effective. Remember, busyness does not equal obedience. You can be busy and not bear fruit. So there is a way to be effective in Jesus' name. You will be effective with less. You will be effective in rest. And you will be effective in obedience by the Spirit of God. God, I pray right now. I thank you for every single person. Sha -la -la -la, that's moving in a new kingdom assignment right now. New places, new people, new faces, new graces. Hallelujah. Shake it. New gifts. I bless you today. Father, I bless all of our people today. In Jesus' name, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Someone say, Amen. Hallelujah. Comment below what spoke to you the most. Subscribe to our YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Follow our public page. God bless. Love you. God bless.